Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go through some analytical geometry questions from a test at Rustenburg Girls High School. If you're watching this video as revision, you might want to pause the video here, try these questions, and then go on to the answers. This is the first set of questions that I'm going to go through, and here is the second set. At the end, there's a challenge which you can try if you like. Here I have a formula sheet that is sometimes given to grade 11s in their tests. If you look carefully, this is where the formulas are that will be used in analytical geometry. Let's take a closer look at them. The first formula that we have is the distance formula. It is used to find the distance or length between two points. The one point will be x1, y1, and the other point will be x2, y2. The next formula is called the midpoint formula. This formula is used to find the middle point between two points. And again, the two points are x1, y1, and x2, y2. The next two formulas that are given are two different versions of the straight line graph formula. The first straight line graph formula is when the graph is given in standard form, and the second version can be used to find the equation of a straight line graph if you're given the point and the gradient. The next formula that's given is the gradient formula, where you find out the gradient between two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. And the last formula that's been given is the formula for angle of inclination. When you work with analytical geometry, you use these formulae a lot. So make sure you are familiar with them and you know how to use them. So let's get to the question. The question says, in the diagram below, ABCD is an isosceles trapezium with AD parallel to BC and AB equal to CD. AB is perpendicular to the x-axis. Now, all the information they've given me above is on the sketch. Let's get to the questions. Question 4.1. Determine the length of DC. Now, if I'm finding the length, I'm going to use the distance formula. So if I want the length of DC, let's make D the first point and C the second point. I'm going to say x is first, 6 minus 2 squared plus 2 minus 5 squared. Now, you don't need to work this out step by step. What you can do is you can type this straight into your calculator to save some time or do it mentally straight away and just give your final answer. So I get 5 units. Question 4.1.2 says determine the line or determine the equation of the line AD. This is the line I'm looking at, and I want the equation of it, so I need the gradient of the line and a point. So in 4.2, let's first calculate the gradient. The gradient will be between A and D, so it will be 3 minus 5 over negative 2 minus 2. And that gradient simplifies to a half. So I know that Y will equal to a half X plus c. Now I'm going to substitute one of the points in that lie on the line. I have two options and I'm going to choose d. So I'm going to say substitute d which is 2 and 5. So y is 5, x is 2 plus c. So 2 times a half is 1 which means that c is 4. Therefore my equation of the line is y is equal to a half x plus 4. Question 4.3, or 4.1.3. We need to determine the coordinates of point B. So, since it is this line is perpendicular to the x-axis, surely it must run parallel to the y-axis, which means that the x value must be exactly the same as A. So the x value will be negative 2. I also know that the length was 5 units. So to get to my y value, I'll just subtract 5 from 3, and I get negative 2. Let's move on to question 4.1.4. I've written down all the important information I've worked out from earlier, next to the questions 4.1.1 and 4.1.2 and 4.1.3. So the question says, what is the angle of inclination of line BC? 
Now the angle of inclination runs from the horizontal up to the line, or in this case, I'm going to use the x-axis, and let's call the angle of inclination theta. Now the formula for the angle of inclination is tan of theta is equal to gradient. So let's calculate the gradient of BC. Wait, I don't need to calculate it. Because I worked out the gradient of AD earlier, surely the gradient must be exactly the same because the lines are parallel. So the gradient of BC will be the same as the gradient of AD because the lines are parallel and that gradient is a half. So I know that tan of theta is a half. So theta will be shift tan of a half and I get typing it into my calculator, 26.57 degrees. Question 4.1.4. Here I'd like to calculate the size of angle ADC. Now again, I can use the angle of inclination. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a horizontal line that's parallel to the x-axis. Now I know that AD has the same gradient as BC, which means it should have the same angle of inclination of 26.57. What I also need is I'll need to calculate the angle of inclination of DC, because if I can calculate that angle, then the angle that's in between them will be exactly the same as angle D, because they're vertically opposite. So let's set that out. So we on question 4.1.5. I already know that my one angle of inclination is 26.57. Let's call the other angle of inclination alpha. So I'm going to need the gradient of DC, which I haven't calculated anywhere yet. So it'll be 5 minus 2 over 2 minus 6. And I get negative 3 quarters. So therefore, tan of alpha is equal to negative 3 quarters. Now, since I have a negative angle, let's work out my reference angle for alpha. I'll use the positive ratio, and I get 36.87. Therefore, alpha will be 180 degrees minus 36.87 which gives me 143.13 degrees. Now, the next thing I need to work out is the difference between alpha and theta. Alpha minus theta will give me, if I use my calculator there, 116,56 degrees. And therefore, that equals to ADC why? Because vertically opposite angles are equal. Now, you might have tackled this question in a different way from me. I've seen some people work out lengths AD, DC, and AC and use the cosine rule. I'm going to show you one more way if you'd like, and then I'm going to move on to the next question. So another option would be to do your horizontal line at A which means that the angle of inclination is theta. And so that means that angle A, let me write it here on the left, angle A will be 90 degrees plus theta. So I get 116.56 degrees. Now, if you remember, the angles in an isosceles trapezium, the top angles are equal and the bottom angles are equal. So therefore, D is equal to 116.56. Why? Angles in isosceles trapezium. And there you go. Let's look at question 4.2. It's a little bit more challenging than question 4.1. So 4.2, they want me to find 4.2.1, the length of XZ. Now, I don't know the coordinates of Z, and if I look down at the challenge, the challenge asks you to find the coordinates of Z. So I think 
starting out by finding the coordinates of z is going to get me a bit stuck. So let's think about what else I know. At the moment, I know some angles, and I could work out angle z by sum of angles in a triangle. I could also work out the length of side x, y. So if you look carefully, I could use this pair of angle and side, and I could use this pair of angle and side, which means I could use the sine rule to calculate the length of zx. And this is something I quite like about analytical geometry, is that other areas of mathematics can come into analytical geometry. So I've got a lot of calculations to do. So let's start. Uh, angle Z would be 180 degrees minus 45 minus 104. That gives me 31 degrees. Reason, sum of angles in a triangle. Then I can also work out the length of X, Y using the distance formula. Negative 3 minus 6 squared plus 2 minus negative 1, so 2 plus 1 squared, and that gives me 3 root 10. So therefore, to work out xz, I'm going to say xz over sine of 104, that one is given, over xy, which is 3 root 10, over sine of 31. So xz is 3 root 10 times sine of 104 over sine of 31. Take out my calculator and I get 17,87 rounded to two decimal places units. For question 4.2.2, I need to find the gradient of xz. Now, remember the challenge question is to find the coordinates of point Z, so I'm not going to do that in this question. What I could do is I could use the angle of inclination. So I know that the angle of inclination is equal to the gradient. So if I could calculate the angle of inclination of that line, that means I can calculate the gradient of it. So as before, remember when you work out the angle of inclination, you need a line that is parallel to the x-axis, a horizontal line. Now the angle of inclination, let's call the angle of inclination theta here, is going to be part of 45. So for now, how about we work out the angle of inclination of line x, y, and let's call that one alpha. So I'm going to need the gradient of x, y, the gradient of x, y will be negative one minus two, over 6 minus negative 3, so 6 plus 3, and that gives me negative a third. So my reference angle will be of a third. I get 18,43 degrees, which means that alpha will be 180 degrees minus 18.43, and that gives me 161,57. So that's what alpha would be. Now, if you think about the angle that's being taken away from the 45, surely that's going to be 18.43. So if I was to break angle X up into angle 2 and angle 1, X1 will be 18.43 because of the angle of inclination. That means x2 will be 45 minus 18.43, and that gives me 26.56. So if I want to work out what the gradient is, I know that tan of 26.56 will be the gradient. And when I type it into my calculator, I get a half. What you may notice is if you type tan 26.56 into the calculator, you get 0 
which rounds off to a half or 0 0.5. But if in the earlier steps you didn't round off at all, you'll see that when you type off that unrounded 26.56, etc., in with tan, you get exactly a half. That brings us to the challenge question. Now, in the challenge question, we want to determine the coordinates of point Z correct to one decimal place. Now, point Z occurs when we have the intersection of two lines. It occurs at the intersection of XZ and YZ. So if I could determine the equation of XZ and the equation of YZ, and then if I set those two equations equal to each other, I should be able to find out the coordinates of Z. So for XZ, we already know from earlier that the gradient is a half. So Y is equal to a half X plus C, and I'm going to substitute the only point I know that sits on that line, which is X, negative three and two. So I get two is equal to a half times negative three plus C, and therefore C is going to be seven out of two. Meaning my equation is Y is equal to a half X plus seven out of two. That will be my first equation. So next we're going to have to find out the equation of yz. Now for the equation of yz, I need the gradient. Now remember, in question 4.2.2, I determined that the angle of inclination, I called it alpha, was 161.57 degrees. So surely, I can work out the angle of inclination of yz. So let's give that another variable. We've already used beta and we've used alpha. So let's call that beta. So beta will be 161.57 minus 104. And that gives me 57.57. So if I want the gradient of yz, I'm going to say tan of 57.57 and I get a gradient of 1.57, let's just go to three decimal places, 1.574. So that means the equation of my straight line graph will be y is equal to 1.574x plus c. I'm going to substitute a point on the line. So let's substitute 6 and negative 1. 1.57 times 6 plus c. And so that means that C is equal to negative 10.443. So my equation is Y is equal to 1.57X or 1.574X minus 10.443. So next, I'm going to equate these two equations. So this will be equation one and this will be equation two. My y values will be the same, so I'm going to say 1 is equal to 2, and I'm going to get half x plus 7 out of 2 is equal to 1.574x minus 10.433443. So when I solve that equation, I'm going to get, I'm not going to show all those steps, I get just about x is equal to 13 if I round off to one decimal place. And then if I substitute that into either one or two, I get that y is equal to 10. So my coordinates of z are 13 and 10.